Hey friends, it's Michelle from Little Farm in the Valley. So it is one of my favorite times of the year, spring, summer, and it is busy, busy. But one thing that we always take time to do every year, it's kind of a family tradition every year, we make homemade root beer. And we make a lot at a time because we have a very large family and we also share with our extended family as well. So we make a ton of homemade root beer every summer and it is delicious. It is crisp, cold, bubbly, and fresh. And it just doesn't get any better on a hot summer day than fresh homemade root beer. So that's what I'm gonna attempt today. I'm playing with the idea of doing it outside, but I know there's some rain in the forecast today, so I'm not sure. Not sure if I'm doing it inside or outside yet, but today I'm doing homemade root beer. So I actually couldn't resist doing it outside because it's such a nice day. So I am bringing in the big guns today. I've got my 30 gallon pot because each of my recipes calls for four and a half gallons of water. So I'm gonna be hauling water for a while. I got my first gallon here. So I'm gonna pour that in. Hopefully I won't lose track. So I'm gonna be bringing out four and a half gallons of water two times. So that would be nine gallons of water if I'm doing my figuring right. So just in case we do get weather, I've got my lid. And of course there'll be flies and all that fun stuff. So definitely gonna be using our lid. So I'm gonna be hauling water for a while and the rest of my ingredients. We actually spent yesterday washing all of the bottles for the root beer. So that will save us a whole lot of time today. The skies, who knows? Could have a rainstorm. This is kind of why I'm doing it right here close to the house in case I need to pack everything in. I don't know how I'm gonna haul a 30 gallon pot full of root beer in, but we'll see what happens. So I'm going to keep hauling water for a while. So I have my next gallon of water kind of warm because I'm gonna start mixing in some ingredients. So I brought my vanilla extract and I'm gonna measure two thirds of a cup into here. Okay, one third cup of vanilla is going in. Now I'm gonna do my other third cup. So our next ingredient that we're going to add is two tablespoons of yeast. And that's another reason why I have my water warm, these first few gallons, because the warm water will help to activate that yeast. I think this is our third gallon here. Now I'm really gonna get in here and stir that yeast. So with the yeast and the vanilla in here, here's what it looks like so far. It smells good. There's just something about, if you grew up drinking this, it kind of brings back a sense of nostalgia. Making it and just smelling the fresh root beer brings back many, many memories of many summers spent drinking fresh root beer. So with our fourth gallon of warm water, we're going to be adding all this sugar. This is eight pounds of sugar, but keep in mind that I'm doing a double recipe here. So another thing about this fresh root beer is it's a fresh carbonated drink. So what carbonates it 
is the yeast and the sugar. So it will feed on that yeast and the sugar and consuming that will carbonate it. So it's actually not a super, super sweet drink after a while because after a month or so, all of that sugar disappears and it kind of turns into more of a, almost an ale at that point. You really don't want it to, to age that much unless that's what you're going for, but I like more of a fresh root beer. So I am actually going to let it sit outside in the sun if we do have the sun. I see it disappeared for today. We'll see what happens, but it's supposed to sit out in the sun for three days. Uh, and by that point, it will be carbonated enough to start drinking. What's going to happen on a cloudy day? I don't know. I'm kind of thinking the heat the heat from the just from the days being warm might do it but i don't know for sure so we'll see what happens so anyway that was my sugar going in and the warm water will help to dissolve that sugar so i'm going to stir for quite a bit so with our fifth gallon i'm going to be adding four cups of honey um Adding my honey now. Okay, now I'm gonna finish adding my honey. I'll get that stirred in really well. getting close to halfway full and we're at number five of nine gallons so I'm glad I took this pot so my next ingredient is going to be my root beer extract you can find these on Amazon if you search for root beer this is called root beer concentrate Zacharin's pure foods makers of root beer since 1889 so this is what we always go with. This is a four ounce bottle. And if you're making one recipe, you add one bottle. So I'm doing my two recipes with my two bottles. This is my sixth gallon here. I'm gonna bring you in and show you when I add my root beer. This is our last ingredient, by the way, but we still have a couple gallons of milk, or, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm so used to making cheese that I call everything milk. Water, I mean. Okay, our extract is in. Oh, now it really smells like root beer. Oh my. I'd say our pot's half full. So we have all of the water in. Can you open it? So darn near filled that pot with nine gallons of, of root beer. But I suppose that the sugar and everything amounts for, for more volume. So I am going to be bottling this stuff for the next couple of hours probably. Okay, we have some bottles here. So for making root beer, you want something that can hold up under carbonation. So we have some kombucha bottles. You can get that lid pretty tight and if it can handle kombucha, it should be good for root beer. Then we have these flip top bottles. The only problem with the flip top, they build up too much carbonation too fast. So you have to keep burping those every couple days. Otherwise you're gonna open them and possibly have an explosion. And then we have a bunch of these 
uh, Mickey's bottles for beer that we save. And it, it seems like they're not strong enough to do it, but we use them every year without a problem. I've never had one go bad or explode. One. Yep. So we're gonna have a bunch of these. And then I have another, I think these are kombucha bottles too. And I use these for my ginger beer and for kombucha. So I know these are good too. I just hope I don't run out of bottles. We washed them all yesterday, everything we could find and hopefully we'll have enough. I have another whole basket full of these. Um, so what I'm gonna be left with are probably these. All these are gonna go to other family members and stuff that have given me bottles. So all I'm gonna probably be left with are these uh, kombucha bottles. So I'm not gonna be keeping too much of this stuff. But I'm going to try and come up with a good system for filling out here. I'm going to have a big, um, a big tub of water because if I do have some spills, it's going to be sticky. And since it's going to be outside, I don't want ants or anything like that. So after we fill the bottles, I'm going to give them a wash in warm soapy water. And then I'll probably set up back here on the swing, I'll set up a couple baskets, uh, laundry baskets that are easy to grab with the full bottles. So. We are going to make an attempt at cleaning up this root beer before the rain. One thing I like about the pot is the handy spout. So I'm going to let out some root beer here. Can you open it a little more? The other way. And then over here, we'll be bottling. I have my my uh, warm soapy water waiting over here and I need to get a clean empty basket to put it in. Lots of help today. Okay, we've got our first gallon out. We're going to start filling. worry too much about spills because I have my tub of water waiting to wash these bottles. You want to give it head space because this will build carbonation and if you overfill it you're going to lose most of it. I'm just going to take whatever bottles come here. I'm not going to go in any particular order. You do want to close this tightly in order so that the carbonation is able to build. Stetson is bringing a couple more baskets to put the, the fill bottles in, some more laundry baskets. So this is what I got from my first gallon, and this one's only half, so I got seven of these little kombucha bottles. So at this point I'm not too worried about running out of, running out of um, bottles. But we're going to give these a wash with our soapy water and then we're going to put them in our laundry baskets over here.
so it's been less than 24 hours. This is the next morning. So we made it, we made it yesterday morning and it's around 7 a.m. now. I came out to hang some laundry and I glanced over here. So I had a gallon left after I filled all my glass bottles. So I took some plastic bottles. I took this one and this one. <laughs> And it did not look like this when I when I filled it. I think this root beer is ready. We're going to check a couple of them. So we're going to check one bottle of each of my different bottles to see what the carbonation looks like. I think we better start with this one. Hopefully we won't have any um, explosions or anything. Close that really quick. <laughs> so at this point, when it's ready, you want to take it inside, get it in the refrigerator, and periodically be burping it probably every couple days to make sure that carbonation doesn't get out of control. Well, this one was a little bit loose, so I'll take another one of these. I can tell just from looking at them, they have a bubbly layer here, so I can tell just from looking at them that most of them are ready. Oh yeah. This one is a, another one I'm a little worried about as far as explosion goes, so I'm going to bend it a little bit, hold it at an angle, and sometimes that helps a little bit with the the pop not just running out the side, holding it off to an angle. As soon as I straighten it, it'll start going over faster. So our root beer is ready. And I thought that it would take three days because the sun was not really shining on it. Yep, it's all ready to go. But maybe it was warm enough. And the fact that I used warm water for for mixing it probably was also a factor. So it looks like our root beer is ready to be taken into the fridge today. So is it worth the work and hassle of making your own homemade root beer? We'll see. Mm. Oh, the smell alone is worth it. Oh yes. This is going to be perfect on a hot summer day. So anyway guys, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss a video and we will talk to you soon.